Okay. Where were you born? I was born in Bayamón, Puerto Rico. And tell me about your home life then. Uh, my whole life? Your home life? Like, like who was in your house and how was it growing up? Well, um, um, I'm, the, I'm the oldest of three. Um, I have a sister in the middle and my, my, my little brother. Uh, my sister is about to be 21 next month. My brother just turned 20 last month. Um, we all from the same dad and mom. Um, I started boxing when I was 13. I'm all, I was always, you know, a, a sport kid. You know, I always liked the track and field, basketball, baseball. Always loved the sports. Uh, but I always wanted to be a boxer since, since ever since I can remember, I always wanted to be a boxer. And my dad, my dad told me that, you know, I needed to get older in order for me to get to the gym. And it was, it wasn't until I was 13 years old that I found out a boxing gym behind my, 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 my school. And I started taking clothes with me to school. And after school, I, I started going to a boxing gym. And then what kind of neighbor? I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were done. I'm sorry. I thought you were done. I'm sorry. I was gonna ask what kind of neighborhood you grew up in. Was it was it a good neighborhood there? Well, I, 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 you know, we I moved a lot. You know, I lived, I lived in different places, but you know, I grew up. I mean, I lived for several years in a little project, and then you know, I live in 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 this um what we call over here urbanizaciones, which, which is mean like uh urbanization. So the last 10, 11, 15 years, you know, I've been living, you know, in, in a little, you know, nice area. Mm. Not, you know, not, not middle class, but, you know. Yeah. Then, uh, you said how you were a sport kid, but were you a, were you a good kid? Were you in trouble ever? What, what kind of? You no, know, um, I'm short, so in school, People always try to pick up, pick up, pick on me in the beginning, but you know, once I always had this this fighter spirit in me, and and one once I you know I let the hands go to somebody, you know, everybody stopped messing with me. But I wasn't a troublemaker. I used to fight a lot though, but not you know not not because I was a troublemaker. You know, people used to try to bully me, but I never let nobody bully me. Mm -hmm. and so you know. I, I, I gotta thank my mother and my family, the way they raised me because they always taught me, you know, the right thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Respect women, don't be hanging out with with bad people that give get me into, into trouble. And I always had good grades in school and and, and fighting fighting is just power on my veins on my DNA, you know, it's just I was born to be a boxer. But, you know, the way I grew up, I can't complain about it. it it's been tough because, you know, we have to get it the hard way. But at the same time, my mother and my dad, they always, you know, both they ass to, to, to find out or to get whatever we, you know, we needed. And, you know, I can't complain about it. Mm -hmm. And so you got yourself in the, in the box and it was just something you were born to do? Or yeah, you know, um, um, I remember when I was seven, uh, I watched my cousin out the other body fight on TV. Uh, and I saw my dad jumping, screaming, and, and all hyped up. <laughs> and that, that stuck to my mind. And, and I told my dad, you know, I wanna, want to be a boxer. Mm -hmm. He told me that when, whenever I turned 10 years old, that he was going to take me to a boxing gym. And I remember on my eighth birthday, I told my dad I wanted to be, a, you know, that we got two more years left before he took me to a boxing gym. And then when I, you know, when my 10th birthday came around, my dad kind of let me down. He told me that I was still too young, <laughs> that he didn't want to, you know, to raise me, that I had to grow. And I kind of got, you know, a little carried away, you know, because he kind of disappointed me back then. So I kept on, on, on doing track and field, basketball, all sports. And it wasn't until I was 13 that I really found a boxing gym behind my school and, and I enrolled myself. I started going on the low. I didn't tell my dad or my mother that I was going to the gym. So they got me my first amateur fight that I needed to get my boxing gear. And that's when I told my dad. And ever since, my dad and my mother, they always be my number one fans. You know, they supported me. Mm -hmm. And not only them, but my family, <coughs> my, my, my brothers, my friends. You know, ever since I decided to be in boxing, 
they be having my back 100%. And every, every time I step in the ring, I have the back. I have been on my back. Mm-hmm. Always. And how old were you when you first walked in the gym? 13? 13. Yeah, okay. Were you good right away? Nah, man. I got, I got, I got whooped on my first amateur fight. Like, <laughs> this kid, you know, this kid really put it on me. Mm. And I was doing basketball and boxing at the same time. And back then, on the, ba- on the basketball team, we, we won in Puerto Rico. And we, we won a trip to, to, to the worldwide um, complex in, in Florida. And we was going to go to Disney, Disney World at the same time. So I was a kid. I was 13. So I kind of put boxing on the side for a little bit. And I started, uh, and I started doing all the, all the things that I had to get done to, to get to go to the trip. And I, I jumped boxing for the whole year. And I went to the trip. I came back. I kept playing basketball. But when I turned 14, everybody grew. Everybody started, you know, meeting, you know, and I, and I, I didn't grow much. So I started putting more time, more time in the bench. I, I kind of didn't like that. So I went back to boxing. Mm-hmm. And you competed at the... T- I stop. Say it again. And ever since I came back, um, you know, I haven't stopped. Mm-hmm. I, did, I did 126 amateur fights. I only lost 12, and I won many international, national tournaments. I went all over the world, and I'm, yeah. I'm really happy with, you know, with my amateur background. Mm-hmm. And you competed at the 2004 U.S. Under-19 Championships. How, how'd you yeah. feel? How'd you feel doing that? And what happened there? Why didn't you go further in, in your first? Was that your first one ever, or? Not, not your first. Was that was that your first tournament ever? No, um, um you mean in the United States? The 2004 U.S. Under 19 at 125, 125. No, that was actually like my second and third tournament. I won the New York Golden Glove tournament. Then I moved on to the National Golden Glove tournament, and I won the National Golden Glove tournament. And then I went, I went back to Puerto Rico. I came back to Puerto Rico and I fought in the only 19 national championship in Puerto Rico and I won. And then we went to South Korea to the only 19 um, world championship. Mm-hmm. And over there I got eliminated in the first round. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then I moved back to, 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 to the States and I went to the only 19 national championship and I won, I think I won two fights mm-hmm. and I lost in the semis in the quarterfinals and I didn't make I didn't make the tournament, but then I keep I keep moving on the ladder. Next mm-hmm. year I came back and I won the other nineteen in two thousand five. Mm-hmm. And you you won the silver medal first at the O four national yeah, I did, title. And the national Peter Hills, I got two two silver medals two years in a row O four O five and they both were controversial fights where 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 I lost by one point each fight each year. So they were fights that couldn't go either way. A lot of people thought I won. Um, I wasn't, you know, I, I'm not a judge, so they thought I didn't bank it, so yeah. I was still happy with my performance. And when you won the National Gold Gloves Featherweight Champion, when you became the Featherweight Champ there in 04, how, how'd that feel, winning the Gold Gloves? Honestly, I was a kid. I was 17 years old. I didn't know English back then. That was, I only, I only was in the state for four months. And I didn't even know how how big the tournament was till, <coughs> till I won the ring. Months later that, that I got the main and I started looking over it that, you know, Roy Mayweather, Oscar De La Hoya, Roy John Jr., all these big, big name Hall of Famers have to go to the tournament. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mostly more than fifty percent of the fighters that win the tournament they they mm-hmm. They make it big in the pros. Mm-hmm. So that was that was something that really really hit me. But afterwards, in the beginning, I didn't I didn't thought it was that big. But it was good. It was good, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not easy to be a national champion in the United States. No, it ain't. You did good, man. Then you won a silver medal at the '05 national title. Mm-hmm. You, what was that? What was that like? Any better than the first one? You know. Um, honestly, those those two years, I thought, I really thought, you know, I won the fight. 
Mm-hmm. And, and you know, the people who were there. And, but hey, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fighter that, that well, I, I do the best of my ability to, to keep my composure, not, don't, don't, not lose my focus. And, and when I lose, I, I just try to come back better. And then, you know, those, those, those were two fights and two national championships that didn't go my way. But, you know, I made it far. I made it to the finals. It was fights that were very close. I couldn't go either way. A lot of people thought I won. And, and, and you know, that wasn't enough for me. I, I was happy and I just kept, kept training, kept training to, to achieve my goals. Mm-hmm. And then you went to Finland and you won the bronze medal at the Tamar tournament. How, how was yeah. Finland? How, how'd you like Finland? Finland, Finland it, was, it, was, it was great. It was actually my first um, overseas trip with the United States. Mm-hmm. And when we went to Finland, we made the news right away because we were a on the night team. Mm-hmm. And the, the people that were in charge of the tournament, they, they kind of didn't want us to compete because we were young. And in the overseas, they got the cadet um, um, com- um, competition. They got the on the night team, and then they got the, the adults. And that was a adult tournament, and they they weren't thinking of not letting us fight, but we worked it out, and and I got a bronze over there. I did pretty well, and I remember that tournament. You know, Danny Garcia was is a a junior welterweight world champion right now. We're over there with us. He got the goal, mm-hmm. and you no, know, those are some memories that I always want to have. Them, man, it was great. And then in 2006, you won first place at the Six Nations Cup. And yeah. How'd that feel? I mean, it was great. I only had one fight. I had to fight this guy from, from France, I think, I believe he was. He was very tall. Very tall. He was very tall. Mm-hmm. The first day he got this kid from Italy, I think, and he blew him out. He really blew him out, like, like for a lot of points. Mm-hmm. And I put it together in the, in the final. And and I got the win. I had to I had to work I had to work hard, but we did it. And you know, yeah. it was it was Sean Estrada, Carl Dargan, and and me. I think that we all got the goal. And then I see went to the one too. Mm-hmm. And uh, you finished third place at the National Pal that year. How did you feel about that? Did you feel yeah? Yeah, that was was. That was a that was a disappointing for me. That was I could tell you that, that one was a it was a little disappointing for me because that was the first Olympic trial qualifier, and I won I won three fights, very tough fights, and then I lost against Walter Sarnoy, which I beat I beat before twice, and I kind of tried to sleep on him and. And I lost. I mm-hmm. think I lost by what, five points. And but it was a loss that really made me focus more and not take nobody lightly, no matter if you beat him before. So that was a great experience that mm-hmm. I served me now. Then mm-hmm. you won a bronze medal at the '06 Amateur Championships. What was that like? Did you feel you won that one? Um, I think I lost against. Um, dress in peace on Richie Barton thought it was a that was a, a, a chef match Richie was great he was a slick bad good counter puncher and he was a it was a chef match from, from the from round number one all the way to last round it was it was a fight where, where whoever made a mistake he was gonna he, 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 was, he was gonna pay for it and um Richie came out. Richie came out with a win, and and he did, he did that. He did what he had to do at the end, and and you know, it was a, a great fight. Unfortunately, that he passed, but you know, it was another great experience. Mm-hmm. I got to beat Juan Lee in the quarterfinals of that tournament, and it was a great fight too. Yeah. Who did you beat, Saddam Ali? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got him back. 
Yeah, you got him back. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? Revenge? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you won a gold medal at the 06 Jose Che Aponte tournament. How, how'd that go? How's that feel? Winning gold? Uh, what? At the Aponte tournament? Oh, man, it was... It was sour, you know, because I came to Puerto Rico to represent United States when I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. So it was it was good that I won, but it was sour at the same time because you know I'm Puerto Rican, you know, and I was born here, I was raised, and and when I was in the podium and they were playing the the. The, um, the United States anthem, a little, I felt a little awkward, but at the same time, I'm so proud because thanks to, to the state and all the experience that I, I got away, you know, that's where where I'm where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm really thankful for for everything that the United States amateur boxing system did for me. Mm -hmm. What was the uh, 06 World Cup uh, tournament like? Oh man. I got spanked all, all three plates. Hmm. Almost the whole team got spanked. We went over at the World Cup, and it was the top against the top. You know, it was gold medalists. They were world champions, mm -hmm. Olympians. And I was young. I was only 18 years old, 19. And I had to fight grown men. And it was, a great, it was a great experience. I came out short in all my fights, but it was a great, great experience. Mm -hmm. Then you went to Italy and you won gold at the Six Nations tournament. What did you think of Italy when you went? Yeah, that that, that was the other one that, that I told you. Um, oh yeah. Well, how uh, how'd I, you like how'd you like Italy? How did they treat you there? Well, Italy, I loved it, man. The food was great. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I actually, you know what I ate over there? I ate. They get they bring you like like a pie or like a cheese pie as an appetizer, right? Mm -hmm. But they put French fry on top of it, hmm. <laughs> and it was great, man. It was it was a cheese pie with French fry, wow. and that was back then. It was almost six years ago, and I I'm craving for it, and, and I haven't done it yet. You know, I just gotta go to places to look, man. I want to put some French fry on top of it. <laughs> that was something that I really I really liked, you know, cheese pie with French fry on top. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was great, man. It was, it was really good. Yeah, I'm gonna do. Then you won third place at the U.S. Amateur Championships. Oh, that's the one you talked about. Yeah. Oh, you defeated Saddam Ali. How'd you feel uh, in being a semifinalist in the 07 Pan Am Olympic qualifiers? Um, it was, um, I actually, I actually won the gold medal. Mm -hmm. I, I lost the game with Ramos yeah. in the final. Mm -hmm. And, um, he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go to the Venom game. He wanted to go home because, in order for you to go to the Venom game, you have to stay another month at the Olymp at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado in the OTC. And he didn't want to stay for camp. He wanted to go home. So since since I was the runner up, they asked me, and I was happy to do it. So in the in the Pan Am qualifiers, they brought four guys from top from the United States. And make us box up, and that's what happened. Hmm. Yeah. So, what happened to make you decide to turn pro? Well, um, I was already 20. I didn't make the Olympics. I tried to come back to Puerto Rico to 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 fight for my country. You know, you know, the state, the USA boxing gave me the release, but unfortunately, the Puerto Rico boxing amateur system didn't want me back, um, and they didn't accept me. So I had another choice, you know. I was getting ready to turn 21, and I wasn't gonna stay around for four more years. Uh -huh. And we decided to jump pro. And in April 11, 2008, uh -huh. <laughs> we did our professional debut in Atlantic City. And do you remember who you fought and what the result was? Yeah, I fought um, Ray Rivera. Mm -hmm. And he had a drill. He had only one fight when I fought him. And mm -hmm. he was a drill. And I knocked him out in the third round. Yeah, you remember everything, man. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you got it. Huh? Then in your seventh, yeah. your seventh fight, you fight at the Coliseo Roberto Clemente. How how'd that feel to fight in there? It was great. You know, it was it was my first pro fight in Puerto Rico, and I had all my family, all my friends, everybody supporting me, and it was great. We mm. fought against some kids from Puerto Rico, and we was able to handle it. You know, we we, we stopped in the third round with a mean left foot to the body that he could have never came up. Yeah. And, uh, let's see. Then you had your first big test, a pretty pretty big test against Dat and Yen. Mm. Again? Yeah, you know. You fought um, for the, your first was, title. Yeah, it was my first nationalized TV fight mm. on the E for the Puerto Rican Day Parade. I became the first Puerto Rican non-champion to to you know have the the, the main the main pitch the, the main event for, for that type of you know um, of fight and and we. We proved it, you know, we proved that we belong in the, in the, in the big league. Yeah. We outclassed that and went in enemy decision all across the board. And, and we ready to be back at it on April 27th against Christopher Marshall. Mm -hmm. how, how did you feel when you won your first title as a pro? Did you, how'd that feel to hold that title? I mean, I can't tell you that it doesn't feel good. For me, it feels good. It, it's like a, like a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. Because my goal is to become a world champion. So, mm -hmm. so I don't become a world champion, I'm not going to be completely happy, you know. Yeah. So I have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. But in your last fight, you fought Jose Barranza. Did you feel his experience? He had a lot of fights. You know? Yeah. Top customer. Yeah. Top, top customer. He's a guy that knows every single trick in a book. And he showed it that night. He made me. He made me work to the best of my abilities, and he made me use plan Plan B. He made me move. He, you know, he really made me use all the abilities that that, that I had, and um, and it was great experience. And and I know that because of that experience, we're gonna look more stronger, faster, and with more experience on April twenty seventh. Hold on one sec. I got my kids here. Hold on. My, my ex is coming again. One sec. Hmm. Is this mommy is, here or no? Yeah. This is very important. Mm -hmm. And I need my back to come. Okay. Okay. So is that all you need? Okay, give me a kiss goodbye. Give me a kiss, Lou. Lou. I love you. Okay, don't bounce it. Love, love you. you. Doing an interview? Yes. Um, okay. I'll see you later. Love you. See you Friday. Tell Mateo I love him. I'll see you Friday. He's gonna come down. Okay. Lou. Yeah. I'm sorry, Lou. So you have your fight coming up with Chris Martin. What do you know about Chris Martin? Oh, Chris Martin is a, is a great fighter, great defensive skills, and um, very good boxing ability. And he likes to be on the move, he likes to box, he likes to counter punch, he likes to utilize the ring to the best of his ability, and, and, and I have to come ready. I have to come ready to put the pressure on him. I have to make sure I cut the ring. I have to make sure I put enough pressure on him so I take advantage of it in the later rounds. This is going to be a fight where conditioning is going to be very important. And I have to make sure I step on my on the gas and, 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 and the earlier going so I can take his legs away from him and, and take him deep inside deep inside the fight. And then, you know, I keep applying pressure, man. This this is going to be a fight where, where if I let him outbox me, it's, it's going to be a long night for me. But if I come and I put the pressure that I need, you know, it's gonna be a long night for him. Mm -hmm. And how's training going? No, you happy with where you are now? Well, training is great. You know, my trainer, which is my manager, Raymond Rivera, is doing an excellent job. He's, he's pushing me to the limit. It's, it's like you know, the relationship me and him have is is 
is different and is is unusual. It's a, it's a it's like a father and son type relationship, and 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 we we all got a good chemistry together, and, and our nutritionist as well is, is is in the team, Carlos Espinosa, and everything is, is you know. Everything is doing. Everybody is doing is doing their job, and 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 you know we we're ready to go. We're just waiting for 27 to come and 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 give all the fans and the boxing world what they deserve. That is, is nothing but a great show. Yeah. You on edge yet, or what kind of person are you when you're in training? Are you the same kind of person when you're not? When you have no fight coming up, or are you more aggressive? What kind of person are you? I'm sorry. What kind of person are you when you're in training and trying to make weight? Do you get a bad attitude, or do you? What kind of? No, no, no. You know, I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy. I'm a very happy person. I'm always laughing. I'm always joking, and I'm always in a good mood. Even when when I'm cutting weight, you know, I don't starve myself. You know, I work hard. You know, right now, it's it was we still like almost 20 days for the fight, and, and yesterday I weighed out only five pounds overweight, and I'm eating. Mm. So I keep a good attitude. I'm always, I'm always in the mood to train. I get my rest. I, I, I get the rest that I need for for my training, and and <coughs> everybody's on the same page. And you know, I'm not gonna tell you that we like a family. We we have our up and downs, but you know that's what it's all about. And I'm just the same person you, you're gonna see in the gym. You're gonna see outside. But when if you in the ring, if you in the ring with me, then it's all different story. <laughs> I'm a whole different animal. Yeah. And do you try to stay away from ladies, or do you try to just, do, you know, what kind of life? I'm very, I'm very, I'm very focused on my career. Mm -hmm. I'm going now, I have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. it'd be hard in Puerto Rico. <laughs> it would be hard for me in Puerto Rico. <laughs> but hey, you know, you got friends. Yeah. You go out, you spend time with your friends. You date here, you date there. I no commitment, no serious attached. I'm mm. focused on my career. And so I'm, I'm bump into one that really wants, you know, mm. best for me. So I'm going to continue on what I'm doing. So girls ain't no problem for me. That's good, man. And, and what, what, uh, what's it like being in Puerto Rico and having so much attention? And you're expected kind of to be... One of the next champions. No, I don't. I don't look for attention. You know, I'm. I'm just a regular. I'm just a regular dude. I'm, a, I'm just a regular person. You know, when I go to the boxing shows, I do get attention, pictures, people come to me. But this is my job, and I love to do that. You know, I don't look for it, but people, people come, and I treat them like I know them forever. And um, and that's just me. Mm -hmm. And when I'm home, you know, I'm. I'm, I'm the type of person that. It's all about family. I love to spend time with my family, and I love I love being around you know my closest one, and and that was that's what it's all about. You know, you don't see me clubbing, coming home, drinking, all that stuff. I do go out with my friends, but you know, I I really pick my spot where I go because at the same time I'm on my way up, and I have to make sure I keep. I, I'm, a, I'm a role model, you know, I got a, a lot of kids look up to me, mm -hmm. so I have to make sure I keep, I keep all the kids, those kids that look up to me, that I'm the clean cut, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I do all my best to stay away from all the drama, all the trouble, and stuff like that. And do you have a lot of haters, or is everyone basically supportive? Well, well, I don't pay attention to it, um, and um, if I do... I don't know, and I'm I'm pretty sure that the ones that hate on me, they real close to me. So I'm I'm the kind of guy that I, I kind of read in between lines and all the people that say hi to me, but really he doesn't he doesn't um like me or 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 don't don't want the best for me. But I can you know. In my heart, I can't have that that kind of a grudge or pain. You know, I can I wish the best to everybody, and if you don't like me, you know, for no reason, I mean, it's up to you. You know, I'm I'm oh, I'm gonna continue doing what I do best, and if you if you don't want the best for me, it's alright. If you need my help, you you come call me. I 
I'll help you because that's just the way I am. Mm -hmm. And how is it? How is it on the island when when news is coming up about like a fighter like like Wanma and he fights Salido there? What's it like there on the island when a fight like that's happening? How how it was? Yeah, how is it? How it was when when Wanma lost? When Juan Manuel Lopez fights Orlando Sol or, yeah, Salido or you know anything like that, like what kind of attention does it get? Is it humongous? Ooh. Ooh. Got a, when a big fight happens with a. Oh yeah, no, no. You, yo, when, when you could put you could put uh, two lasers to fight each other anywhere, and people are gonna stop and watch. Hmm. Yeah. So when when they say boxing is gonna, is gonna be over, I mean it's gonna be on. People mm -hmm. come, they show up, no yeah. matter where it is. And when a big fight like that comes around, they pack the place up. Yeah. They really pack the place. And and it's great, you know, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico they, they support their fighters. And, and you know, but they always have to, you know, keep keep their composure at the same time. They have to keep their, keep the, you know, they, they role model status that they are. Because if they slack, Puerto Rican fans are the, I don't, I don't think there's a tr strictly spot fan that, and, you know, nowhere else that in Puerto Rico. Yeah. And who's your top five Puerto Rican fighters of all time? Do you do that? Of all time? Yeah. Oh, that's no question asked. Felix Trinidad, that's my role model, that's my idol. Mm. And, you know, I'm, I have the honor to say that I know him personally. And Tito is just, man, Tito is big, man. Tito is, is, is being retired a little, a little over five years already. And um, wherever he goes, he stops the, the, the place. Oh. He goes to the place and people start screaming, Tito, Tito. <laughs> you know, when he goes to the mall, he's, he's to stop the mall. Like, he has to give autographs. He don't say no to nobody. And Tito is big, man. And... and I just, you know, when he's with you, you don't feel like you're talking to Tito, right? So you're talking to a superstar. Mm -hmm. Because he makes you feel like he's like you're the superstar. Mm -hmm. He's just, Tito, man, is, is like I say, he's my role model in and outside of me. And what kind of advice did he give you about boxing? Yeah, he, all the time that he tells me is about dedication, focusness, and, and, uh, and I keep aiming, well, you know, to my goal and not, not, not losing sight of it. Because if mm -hmm. I want it, I gotta go get it. Mm -hmm. And do you feel ready to join that kind of group, like the Tito Trinidad's and the Wilfredo Vasquez? Eventually, I will. And you, you will see. I'm on, I'm on a, on a developmental state, state, statement right, I mean, stage right now, and and we know we're gonna get there. And now we know Christopher Martin. It's a huge step up, and mm. and we're gonna we're gonna keep proving the world that, that we belong with the big boys. Yeah, you're probably about four or five fights away. You feel ready now? I feel I'm mentally I'm ready. You know, I got the, the, the a champion mentality, and mm. nobody can take that away from me. But I do believe, and I and I and I know that I have to get two or three more fights in. Get more experience. So I got only 15 fights, yeah. but um, time will tell. Probably with this fight, I feel that I'm ready, but I'm just still ready for Christopher Martin. Whatever comes next is, is up to my promoter and the manager. And what do you think you're gonna do with Christopher Martin? You think you'll stop him? What's your prediction there? Honestly, I don't. I'm not gonna tell you no prediction, but I could tell you that I'm gonna put a hell of a pressure on him that I don't that I don't know. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to handle it for 10 rounds. Mm. But I hope he comes in a great condition. I hope he comes to put a great show. And um, I guarantee you that if he do, it's going to be a, a a great fight. It's going to be a great fight. All right, man. But I'm coming on top.